And we're back on Radio Row with one of our favorites. I know I say that every time, but I like to <laughs> drive the point home. John Abram and John, dude, we saw you last week in Vegas. You're on the show again this week. At this point, we should just build out a segment for you. Let's every do it. week, you come on the show and you chop it up. Let's do it. I like it. We're going to call it Salmon Sessions. Dude, okay, so great segue. And I, I promise I didn't tee you up for this. I met someone last week who says Salmon. It's a lot of people who say salmon. I've never, but I've never known anyone personally outside of you, I of just, course. I just I, I opened the world's eyes to it. She was from the South, is what she was saying. That she was from, she went to school in Alabama. That's why. And she said, it's it's salmon. She goes, because yeah. I was talking to her. We, like when I you forget. go to restaurants down there, you just, in the South, you just be like, you know, if you want salmon, you be like, I want salmon. If you say you want salmon, they'd be like, you want what? You get good salmon down South? Yeah. I think, when I think of good salmon, I think you of get California, good, I think of the West fish. Coast. Yeah, good seafood anywhere pretty much down south. You been eating good since you've been here? Oh, yeah. What'd you have? So last night we oh, went yeah. to this Cuban I went Cuban to Prime joint. Fish. Oh. Alaskan King Crab. Oh, so you're, li- you're eating, eating while you're down here. Oh, yeah. We went to this Cuban spot last night. Really good. What is, what is it called? Uh, Havana 1957, I think. Future sponsor, I suppose. But we... Uh, we got the we got like a little bit of everything, but they had this. They call it an enchilada, but it's not an enchilada like we think of. Mm-hmm. It's essentially like a chipina. It was like seafood with like a better. Ra- oh, dude, I went to bed last night thinking about it. Out. Yeah, man, I'm seriously go go check it out. But you're not the only guy in town, which is great. There's a lot of silver and black running oh, around wow. Miami, which is good. So we've seen you. We saw Josh. We're seeing Josh tomorrow. Max D Wall was running around earlier, but I'm curious. We've heard so many people make the case for Max and make the case for Josh for Rookie of the Year. Exactly. Now, I'm curious when you – because we've talked a lot about how you had a really unique perspective of Mm -hmm. this season. You're essentially a redshirt year. When you looked at – we'll start with Max first. When you looked at Max and what he was able to do week after week, what really impressed you from him from week one to week 17? Just seeing the growth, honestly, you know. Working on, you know, his get-off, you know, being playing more consistent, you know. Not just having those ups and downs throughout, you know, a game. You know, he just played consistent, you know, and he become one of those key guys, you know, that we could depend on. You're talking like a coach now, man. You got the coach. I'm gonna get you a clipboard. You've been hanging out with Gunther too much. <laughs> I've been hanging out with Coach Gruden too. Much. <laughs> what's is, what's Gruden like one on one when you guys are just chopping it up? Is uh-uh. he like what what he is normally? Nah, I mean it's you know it's a lot more you know you know focused, um, relaxed. You know, still intense, but you know, more serious. You know, when it's me and him one-on-one, you know, we have, you know, true heart-to-hearts, you know. You know, we talk about a lot of things, you know. When we break down film and things like that, you know, he's, he's always teaching me, you know, trying to help me to grow and be a better player and a better person. You know, we talked last week about how important it was and how I thought it was so important and so great that you stuck around during rehab this year and you weren't running around. You were at the facility as much as you were. Who did you kind of spend, when you were just rolling around 1220, who were you spending the most of your time? Like, who were the guys that you were talking to the most, whether it's your teammates, the coaches, whoever it was? Mike Mayock. Double M? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we spent a, we, probably two, three days a week, uh, probably two, three hours a day, you know, just watching film and stuff like that. You know, just you know, talking about, you know, the, you know, the upcoming of the future and the present. You know, things that, you know, that frustrated both of us, things that we like, you know, that was going on throughout the season. Uh, one of the players, Josh, me and Josh came really close. You know, me and him are like, really close friends now. Uh, yeah. uh, Keyshawn Nixon, you know, he was a guy, you know, you know I turned to, uh, you know, I, I, main thing, you know, I was just trying to help him a lot throughout the season. You know, he's an undrafted free agent. So, you know, he had a different perspective than I had. You know, he didn't feel like, you know, he had many chances. But I told him, you know, if, if they didn't want you, you wouldn't be here. You know, I think that's interesting you bring up Keyshawn because that's such an interesting dynamic where you come in, you're this big dog, you're expected to produce day one. Obviously, the injury happens and you find yourself in a different role. But you look at a guy like Keyshawn, who you said essentially comes in here as a UDFA. In terms of just for you, in terms of John Abram, is it good to have guys around like that who have such a different outlook on, yeah. on the league, on, on this as a business, compared to a guy like you who comes in? Like, I'm just curious about that dynamic yeah, and how much you can learn from a guy like him, and vice versa, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, you learn a lot. Like I said, you know, we, we're in pretty much the same position but total different positions because we came in, you know, at different levels, you know. I was the first rounder. He was an undrafted guy. So, you know, you know, I do have a little bit more wiggle room, but like I told him, you know, they wanted you here. They brought you here for a reason, you know. When we when we picked out you know who we wanted as UDFAs, like I remember sitting in the office on the second second day of the draft and you know going over some guys with with you know with PG and you know Jo, 
you know, and these were they hand picked these guys. You know, Jalen Maiden. I mean, just said Jalen Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Maven. <laughs> Dylan Maven paid me at uh, Mississippi State. Uh, Dylan Maven, you know, these were guys that, you know, were handpicked, you know. These are the guys that we want. So, you know, they went out and found us. And I had to, you know, tell Keyshawn that, you know, throughout the season, you know, like you can't relax, you know. These guys, like these coaches, they went out and picked you. They want you here. You, you know, know and it's so interesting, too, where you look at the way that the NFL is now, right, where you have to be good from 1 to 53. Yeah. Both of these teams that are playing in the Super Bowl on Sunday are good from 1 to 53. Yes. And it doesn't do you a whole heck of a lot of good if you're good from 1 to 24, but that 25th guy is not very good. Yeah. So it's it's kind of cool to see that. I don't Mayock, like why Eddie just used 24. 20, oh, you, he could have used 30. I could have. <laughs> he said 24. <laughs> 35, 27, <laughs> pick a number, pick a number. You know what I'm saying. But it's interesting that, and it's kind of, it makes you feel good, like we're on the right track, that that's something yeah. in the mind of Gruden, of Mayock, like, hey, yeah, it's great to have John Abrams. It's great to have Josh Jacobs. It's great to have these big dogs. But you need to fill out that roster from 1 to 53. Yeah. And then, I mean, and that's one thing, you know, just looking back at the season, you know, end up going 7-9, last game of the year, you know, just didn't fall the way we wanted it to, could end up being 8-8. Eight and eight. I uh, didn't make the playoff runs, you know, because the Chiefs ended up winning out. I mean, Titans ended up winning out. But, you know, when I look back at it, you know, looking at, you know, all the things that we have to look forward to, you know, two first-rounders this, this year, some third-rounder guys, and you know, we got a ton of money in free agency that we, that we can spend. So it's just like, you know, I'm looking at it as we're going to go into Vegas, a new team. Man, you're talking like – you can tell you've been spending time with Mike, man. You're talking about the draft picks, about the capital we got coming up. I can't wait to see you in the war room at some point mm -hmm. saying, like, hey, we got to move from 12 to 24 yeah. to, to wherever That's, it is. And, see, Coach Gruden wants me to be a coach. But, like, when me and Mike talked about it, I told him I would rather be on the GM side. I can see you doing that. Like, what do you think – what draws you to that side of it? Is it the evaluation? Is it getting to know um, guys? Like, because nah, you, you strike I'm me as a good so, people person. I'm a good people person, person but uh, – it's a fine line, you know. Guys don't love football these days, you know, like you know, like it, like they did in the past. You know, a lot of guys just play it just because of what they can do for them. So, and that, you know, that 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 disinterests me. So, you know, and I get really frustrated, you know, being there throughout the season, you know, all year, you know, I I saw week in and week out, you know, PG and Jo giving us, you know, tips of, you know, when they get in like the Titans, every time they got in a loose bunch, they would run a, a deep like if it was if it was a loose bunch, they would run a deep route. So the first play of the game, when the guy ran the out and up on Nevin, it was just like, we just told you they're going on a deep route when they get in the loose bunch. It's, yeah, I mean, it's so crazy. I mean, we could, I'd love to talk to you for an hour just about stuff like that, just about in the game what you see, what you got to see, especially this year, because yeah. this is the first time that you've really been just watching. On, yeah, just watching, knowing like, hey, not, there's nothing I can do. My timeline is my timeline. But yeah. I would love to talk to you about that. But I'm curious, do you watch the playoffs? Like, do former guys, like, not former yeah. guys, but do guys who aren't in, like, do you watch the games on Sundays? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you, you want to see, you know, who's playing at a high level, you know, and, you know, what it takes to get to this point. You know, I actually, you know, one of my close friends plays for, for the Chiefs and one of my close friends plays for the 49ers. And so I actually went to a 49ers game, the last game. He, he, he gave me a ticket. He was like, you know, this is my last game because he actually came to one of our games. Oh, okay. Samuel. Oh. Yeah, they had a bye week. He ended up coming to our game. Now, did you go in? I can't imagine you went in in silver and black, right? You're, you know I did. Come on. No, you didn't. You yeah. went. John Abram waltzed into Levi Stadium, head to toe red. Who said? No one said anything and, to you, right? No. <laughs> and, and I was in there screaming, "Go, Pat, go!" Because I hate the Niners. <laughs> I was like, "Put cheese on everything." Because I do got friends that play for the uh, Packers as well. So, you know, I was rooting for both of those guys. But you know, just being around, you know. I was around, you know, Emmanuel Sanders, you know, guys like that, you know, for, you know, because it was Debo's birthday as well. And, you know, he, they was, he was just telling, you know, just talking about the standard, you know. He wore, you know, his championship ring from Denver. You know, he was just saying, you know, how, you know, they, they always, you know, the vibe is just different. You know, it's like a brotherhood. You know, they come together to work. You know, they have fun, but they get a lot of work done. You know, he, you know, he just, it's just a championship mentality, you know. And I watched that, you know, and that's part of the reason why I watched the games. You know, I'm trying to see, you know, what it takes to build a championship. You know, and it's, people talk about that championship mentality so much, and obviously the teams that talk about it are the teams that are playing for championships. Yeah. But do you th you look at this team the way it's constructed now and knowing all the draft capital coming, like you brought up, like, like John Mayock brought up, but do you look at that and you're like, hey, we have a chance to really kind of establish that here in Las yes. Vegas? Yes, I mean, you know, you know, you know, talking to Gruden and talking to Mayock, you know, they have high expectations, you know, for me, Josh, and Clee. So, you know, I'm trying to learn about it so I can do my best job, you know, and my best, do my best of my ability to, you know, 
to set the standard and to uphold the standard, you know, of a championship mentality. So John Abrams, our guest, and John, before I let you get out of here, uh, I'm curious, what does a Super Bowl watch party at your house consist of? Little Salmon? We ain't having one. Nothing? We ain't having Nothing. one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you yeah. just going to kick back on the couch watch the game? Yeah. That's yeah. good. I mean, at this point, I figured it'd be charting plays, like uh, looking, oh, at, oh, yeah. looking oh, at free agents ready. that are coming oh, I'm, up. No, I'm getting ready for next year. I'm watching the, <laughs> I'm watching the Chiefs, watching Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I, feel, I mean, hey, we're going to need you to shut down that big fella next year I know. for sure, for sure. I mean, he's a beast, though. I mean, you look at Waller, that we, you know, obviously it's in our locker room and has been a stud, had a great know, 2019. Man. Just the whole package of 2019 was so good for him in so many ways. And it's only going to get better, you know. You know, we're going to put more pieces around him. You know, people can't double him anymore, so then it, he becomes a mismatch guy. Yeah, I, I mean, that's really the idea of the plan, get a little help on the outside, get a, get a little of this. Josh is bigger, badder, faster, healthy in 2020, and things are looking up for the silver and black. And, John, man, we like hanging out with you. This was a lot of fun. We need to talk, come in, talk ball for a little bit. I want to I pick the brain of John Abram, <laughs> the, the player evaluator, the future general manager. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, brother. We appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of the time here in Miami, and we will see you. Man, we'll see you soon, I'm sure. See you soon.